Hello everyone. In this video, we will talk about synthetic layers used in blades. What are they like, how do they differ, and why do we need them? So that you can experience an intellectual orgasm right now, here is a list of the names of synthetic layers in blades that we have in our store. As you can see, there is synthetic layers for every taste. And please don't think that I swallowed some pills and in a surge of cosmic energy composed this heap of incomprehensible words. No, these are the words written on the blades. Yes, there's even silver carbon. And now the question. What should we do with this? First, we need to understand that adding a synthetic layer changes the properties of the blade. Second, any blade is primarily made of wood, and therefore it's the wood that gives the blade its playing properties. Any synthetic layers merely adjust these properties. For example, if the weight of the blade is 85 grams, then the weight of the carbon in it may be around 3 grams. If we delve into the properties of different synthetic layers and try to choose a blade for ourselves, we also need to understand that wood varies, and the properties of different types of wood differ significantly. The thickness of the layers, their quantity, the properties of the glue used to bond these layers also matter. There are also technologies for processing the layers and something else that is unknown to us. So if there are layer of IS in two different blades, it doesn't mean that they have the same properties. Therefore, if we want to analyze and compare blades with different synthetic layers, we need to have nearly identical blades that differ only in these synthetic layers. Then we can contemplate and decide how these blades play and how they differ. But such situations do not exist. We will always have blades with significantly different wood layers. Moreover, slightly different synthetic fibers can be called by the same name. If there's carbon in the blades, it doesn't mean that in 10 different models of blades, the carbon will have the same properties. Thus, in real life, the theoretical analysis and comparison of blades with different synthetic layers is an attempt to guess blindly with a 99% chance of making a mistake. I have contemplated on these topics a million times and analyzed them. It's fascinating. And other players do this too. But now, considering the experience of testing a very large number of blades of all types, my conclusion is this, the inscriptions with the composition of the blade do not provide any practical benefit. These inscriptions are just a decorative element. Manufacturers write them to arouse a sense of interest and desire to buy in buyers. And that's it, this information doesn't carry any practical benefit. Lying carbon, special composite, aramid carbon, Z carbon. Wow, how cool, I already want to buy it all. I'm already running to the store with money, and don't discourage me. This is approximately how these inscriptions should affect people. They add 3 grams of some kind of synthetic material and now all buyers supposedly will start hitting the table twice as better. Equipment manufacturers are trying their best to pull the wool over our eyes. And then it hangs on our ears, hindering us from thinking rationally. I recommend understand all these carbons, kevlars, fiberglasses, and zillins exactly like this. All these names have almost zero benefit. If you analyze the layers and try to choose a blade from several options, the only reliable way is to have personal experience playing with these blades. In other words, try two or three rackets. They should have the same rubbers and only differ in the blades. And now, if you still want to learn something about all these carbons, I will give you some basic information that has some usefulness. If you add synthetic fiber to a wooden blade, the spot of stable rebound increases. When we hit the ball with different parts of the blade, the properties of different parts of the blade are not the same. The center of the blade has the best control. Control is worse at the edges of the blade. Also, the flexibility of the blade changes depending on whether we played with the center or the top of the blade. But that's another topic. In general, when we play not with the center of the blade, but with the edge, the accuracy of hitting the table is lower, and the probability of missing is higher. In other words, in the center of the racket's blade, there is a zone of stable rebound. And the addition of synthetic fiber is primarily intended to increase this spot so that we hit the table better. But of course, this is not the only goal. Carbon can also add speed to the base plate. And not only that. You don't need to think about all this. Pondering on these topics will not lead to anything practically useful. 
Just keep in mind that all these carbons increase the spot of stable rebound, and at the same time, the stiffness of the blade increases. Increasing the stiffness of the blade leads to the fact that in general, controlling the ball becomes more difficult. But not in all cases. It will become slightly easier to handle spins. Well, as you probably guess, this is not the only aspect that synthetic fiber addition affects. And if you try to comprehend and analyze all this in your head, you will most likely either make a mistake in your analysis or your brain will freeze. So, I recommend once again not to spend time on it. You need to try playing with the blade. It is the only real way to more or less understand the properties of the blade and understand how suitable it is for you. By the way, now is the time to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Come on, friends, don't be lazy, click on the like button. And one more thing. Carbon is usually harder than wood. And arillate carbon is softer than carbon. For example, I don't like hard blades, and carbon increases stiffness. Perhaps that's why I like the arillate carbon blade. Firstly, it is high quality in terms of processing and playing properties. And secondly, it is softer than many attacking blades. Its name is Inha 970 xxa By the way, to save your time, I recommend you to pay attention to Inha blades. It just so happens that all or most of its blades are high quality products. They are as good as the blades of world famous well known brands. And the cost is much lower, sometimes by 2 to 2.5 times. Also, sometimes there is a Kevlar layer in the blades. It is harder than carbon. For example, the Inha 970XXK blade. By the way, there is also the Inha 970XXC blade. This is a blade with carbon. That's a series of similar blades with different synthetic layers. There are many other synthetic layers. But we don't know anything about them. Thank God. They surely have some benefit in the game. More precisely, some influence on playing properties. Some people will like it, some won't. But first and foremost, it's marketing, a smokescreen to attract the buyer's attention and arouse the desire to buy. So, try out blades in the game and you will be able to adequately decide what is really better or worse for you. If you have any questions, write them under this video. And visit our store more often for purchases.